Welcome to Spiritual Dessert Truths, episode 136, for Russell Brand, continued from 135 and 134. Evil beast of money. <laughs> We're talking about the evil beast of money. The mark that's on your head that's a number. The social security number, which is your banking number. You're born with it, you're born into it, you're born into paying the taxes to your government of an enslavement that's invisible, that you're not supposed to be aware of, but we are. There's constant talk of debt and injecting more and more money into the economy. And every country in the world owes some other country money. The banks keep getting bailed out for some magical stroke of the government's wand. And the reserve banks inject more money or they release more money to the various banks and economies to bail them out. They're just not bailing us out. They're still foreclosing on people's homes with our money, with fake money, really. With every new injection of money, the people become more indebted and more enslaved. What we need to ask is, who do we owe all this money to? Who does Greece and Italy and Spain and Ireland and all the countries owe this money to? Who was the executive power and authority to just keep printing more money, creating money out of thin air and enslaving all the countries and their people? The answer is cold and sober. Hope will wake up those who still believe in the fairy tale ending of this global economic mess. You owe all of this imaginary money to the same group of the untouchable elites and the secret societies that JFK was referring to who have claimed the right to print money and written these rights into law to protect themselves. They control political and economic policy of governments and therefore own all of us as their ignorant slaves to keep working for the less than 1% of the world's elite. These are the royal political bloodlines who remain faceless and who continue to control the supply of money and absolute enslavement of the human race. This is the point where newcomers to this information will have to keep the open mind on the path to enlightenment because this is not what we've been taught. And this is indeed a tough pill to swallow for those who believed that the government was their friend doing the best they can for us, and especially those educated members of society who still believe that they are too smart for someone to have deceived them so monumentally. Since the governments are supposed to be servants of the people, they should consult the people about what to do. Let's face it, the answers to the problems are actually very simple. Just ask a bunch of junior high school kids and you'll get some hard-hitting, sobering answers. The people know exactly what they need but there seems to be no government in the world that's listening. <laughs> Except for Greece, hopefully Greece is doing it. We're proud of you. <laughs> you made up democracy and now you have to reinvent it because it got corrupted. The largest majority of the nearly 7 billion people in the world live in misery. They hate their life, their job, their boss, the fact that they have to get up early in a cold and rainy day to catch a bus, a train, ride a bicycle in the rain to a job that they despise just so that they can earn some money. Money to buy bread, milk, pay rent, mortgage, pay the electric bill, phone bill, and pay groceries, and eventually pay for virtually everything that crosses our paths that we need in our lives, or we think we need. Most of us never really make enough money to live a fulfilled life. Because other than air, virtually everything else has a price tag on it. Some twisted way, on this long and convoluted path of deception about money, we've become well-trained soldiers, marching to the rhythm of the beat of the invisible whip of the money makers. We've slowly been fed statements like money makes the world go round. And if you work hard, you'll make it to the top. And if the money buys the whiskey without questioning it for so long. The truth is, the world goes round all by itself. And when you get to the top, it's never quite enough. And while at present it may be the money that buys the whiskey, it's the people who make the whiskey. And therefore, it should be the people, not the money who decides who and how the whiskey is consumed. Don't drink. <laughs> Through subtle indoctrination, money has become the lifeblood of the human psyche. But in fact, it's more like a drug because most of us believe we can't survive without money. Well, nothing can be further from the truth. Everything around us exists in abundance and functions without money. We are the only species known to us that has ever adopted this thing called money. Millions of people around the world create millions of things every day that fills the shelves of supermarkets. Millions of farmers around the world produce millions of tons of food every month. But instead of the food and other necessities reaching the people, it gets discarded and dumped. While millions die of starvation for the simple reason that they do not have money. This is the most evil kind of enslavement that anyone could have ever conceived. But 
The control of the enslaved species called humanity does not end with the control of money. The supply of food has been the holy grail for the controllers for several decades. As long as companies like Monsanto continue being given the freedom to mess with nature and create invasive, genetically modified food species, the farmers will rapidly lose their ability to grow organic, natural food and will have to resort to becoming the slaves of Monsanto and their faceless owners. Food will fall completely under the control of the same small minority of controllers. Many good-hearted, law-abiding citizens are aware that this maliciously planned control of food supply is an advanced stage. It is the most important thing we must guard against with every resource we have. These agencies are not new to many who have been researching it for a long time. But until now, many of the vigilant visionaries who predicted this a long time ago have been called conspiracy theorists and other derogatory names by the masses who thought that they were too smart for anyone to pull the wool over their eyes. With the imminent collapse of the financial industries, all of these so-called conspiracies are being blatantly exposed for all to see. The time for us to wake up is now. The controlled media are not going to cover the extent of the Marshall Wall Street or any of the rebellions or any of the revolutions. They're going to show the minimum. They're going to show that it's not working when it is working. Of course, they will continue to sow dissent among the people trying to keep us divided. One of the major tools of control is energy. It covers the supply of electricity, oil, gas, amongst others. The development of free energy has probably been one of the best guarded secrets. You're not going to find that on the news. For the past 120 years, there have been hundreds if not thousands of new energy and free energy devices discovered. One of the best examples of such discoveries is Nikola Tesla, who gave the world free energy in 1902 when he built his Tesla tower in Wardenclyffe on Long Island, New York, and sent free energy to light up thousands of homes and even a car without any wires and without any payment. But every time any scientist or ordinary person reveals such discoveries, either they are silenced with money or they mysteriously die, disappear, or they're ridiculed into obscurity by the well-orchestrated disinformation campaigns by the oil and energy giants. Those who control the supply of energy cannot allow free energy to become a reality, and they have all the legal and military power to control and enforce. He goes on to say, I know that there are still uninformed skeptics who cannot wrap their heads around the concept of energy. They keep arguing in support of the controllers, saying things like, it's expensive to generate electricity. To those I say, inform yourselves, take a science or a physics class, scratch around the internet, you'll find, discover the greatest cover-up imaginable. In physics class, they teach us that the universe is one giant ball of energy. It cannot be destroyed. It can be converted from one form of energy to another infinitely. Nature does it very successfully all around us. So ask yourself, why are we paying for it? Because it's all about money. The controllers will not let go of the control of energy until they're forced to. But how can we get the powerful, faceless controllers of money and energy to release the grip on humanity? Sounds like Moses. Let my people go. The answer is simple. Remove the tool of enslavement. Remove money from society. This simple step is the fastest and most effective way to immediately break the stranglehold of the bankers and their sidekicks like the energy companies. They cannot make money through their corporations. If they cannot make money through their corporations, they cannot control the supply. Unless, of course, the government declares martial law and there's a military enforced takeover, in which case it will make the government the enemy of the people. And the outcome of these situations is inevitable, as we've seen in the past 150 years. Here are some hints and examples to look for in the search of free energy. Cars can run on water, hydrogen, oxygen, electric, Magnetic energy. Salt water burns when exposed to certain radio frequency. Water can be instantly boiled with sound frequency. And the ancient ruins in South Africa are still active with unimaginably high levels of sound and electromagnetic frequencies, giving us endless amounts of free energy, even after thousands of years of ruin. Universally, free energy is an aspect of the divine consciousness of the infinite source of all.
It is there for us to use as we grow in consciousness, enlightenment, and wisdom toward the world of unity. But today, the reality is that billions of people live in poverty and a strange kind of quiet desperation waiting for some kind of miracle to deliver them from the harsh economic times. They dream of fame and fortune and be seen in the endless number of television shows offering exactly that. People everywhere looking for any kind of salvation or relief to their own personal suffering. But because of the mass ignorance of what is really going on, why it is happening, most people don't really know where to turn or what to do. Most believe there is no happy ending. This document presents the world with the opportunity to embrace a really happy ending with unimaginable prosperity in all of its inhabitants, the perfect harmony with all of nature and the earth. But for now, there's a constant talk about stimulating the economy, business growth, increasing international trade, and all other such failed actions of the past that have landed us in this mess in the first place. None of what the governments and bankers are proposing are solutions for the people. They are solutions and further acts of enrichment for the banks and their owners. Governments who are supposed to serve their people treat them like disposable commodities. The Wall Street protest is a clear sign that the people have had enough especially the youth who are waking up to the fact that the government stole in their country and made them their slaves. The signs are everywhere, a global economic system on which the verge of collapse. How long before it falls is not clear, but we need to be wide awake and think ahead. We have to be realistic about this. What will we do as a species if all falls and there's no money to buy stuff? We have to realize that money is and has been the hurdle to all the progress. It has caused unimaginable hardship and suffering among humans all over the world and continues to do so now more than ever before. Money is the overwhelming reason for most crimes committed, corruption, extortion, all other social diseases that we've developed. Money tears families apart and causes brilliant people to commit suicide. It's not only the tool that enslaves us, but it's also becoming the cancer of society. Every socio-political system that we've ever had as a human race has failed us dramatically, not because of incompetent people, because of money. Some people jump to the conclusion by saying that contributionalism is just another form of communism or socialism. These assumptions are absolutely wrong. Every system we've had has always been based on money, including communism. And any system that uses money, barter, or trade will remain a failed system of enslavement. And we, as the majority of this planet, have to move beyond it. So now that we know what the cause of the misery is, what are we going to do about it? There is only one way out of enslavement, and that's to move to a world of absolute equality, unity, and abundance for all on every level of life, a world without money. Some people think that living without money is like going back to the Stone Age or the Dark Ages or living in a cave. That's very indicative of our poisoned minds of consumerism and the trap of money. Without money, we actually achieve the opposite, the complete opposite. The unleashing of scientific knowledge, sharing of the most advanced discoveries of technology, free energy, engineering, design, construction, and every other area of society. By removing money, we remove all obstacles to discovery and progress in every sector. As unimaginable as it may be for some, you'll soon see how liberating it is when you embrace the simple philosophy of the natural order of things and imagine the possibilities, a system where people contribute to the greater benefit of all their community, locally and globally, rather than chasing money to buy bread, where they can follow their natural talents or acquired skills and love every moment of every day, living a fulfilled life. Whether they're farmers, scientists, shoemakers, civil engineers, or anything else that they choose, the positive energy generated by these conditions are unimaginably to us at present. They say that history has taught us nothing. Well, this is the time when we finally have to learn from history and choose a completely new course. This potentially catastrophic economic situation presents us with a shining opportunity to consciously change our course and secure a destiny as a human race, a destiny of abundance for all. The immediate benefits of the world without money are inspiring. Take a look from your own perspective, and you'll find that there's many more benefits. Again, that list, a world without money, no crime, no hunger, no homelessness, no greed, no gluttony, no extortion, no hoarding, no debts, no hierarchy, no control, no accounts, no obstacles of any kind to progress, 
maybe not utopia yet, but certainly a natural order of things. Love you.